Good evening, and welcome to the Young Center for Anabaptist and Biotic Studies here at Elizabethtown College. I'm Steve Knoll, the Young Center Director, and delighted that each of you is here this evening for the 2023 Snowden Lecture, celebrating 100 years of the Brethren Witness in Nigeria. The Church of the Brethren in Nigeria, known in English by the acronym UIN, is the largest national body of the Brethren in the world. The origins of this church date to 1923, and to mark the centennial, we are delighted to welcome Dr. Philip Azura Magada uh, here this evening as he shares from the remarkable EYN story. Philip is especially suited to be our guide on this journey because he is the co author and principal editor of the recently published EYN history book, and we have a a, a copy of that book in the lobby on the table, and there is a, a sign-up sheet there if you're interested in possibly um, purchasing a copy. Um, no obligation tonight, but uh, if we know about how many people might be interested, the Young Center is looking into what the cost for shipping copies of, of the book here would be, and we would contact you and, uh, with, with a, a price that we could uh, follow up. Um, before introducing Philip more completely, uh, in a moment, I want to uh, acknowledge the generosity of Lucille Heisey Snowden, whose funding of the Snowden Endowment makes possible the Snowden Fellowship each fall semester. And as uh, many of you know, Lucille passed away this past August at age 91. We are indeed indebted to Lucille for making this event possible and uh, each of the Snowden events each fall, but this fall for um, all the costs involved with bringing. Philip um, here to us. And it was not entirely easy to bring him here uh, because of uh, challenges of the visas and other things with the US State Department, but we're so happy that eventually uh, things fell into place and it's just been delightful to get to know him since his arrival here. And he will be here until about the middle of January. Philip Azura Nagata is an associate professor in the Department of Religion and Philosophy at the University of Jaff in Jaff, Nigeria where he has been a faculty member for a decade. Prior to his appointment at the University of Jaffa, he taught at Polk Theological Seminary and at the Theological College of Northern Nigeria. He holds a PhD in Hebrew and Old Testament studies, and is the author of numerous articles and two books, The Shepherd Motif in the Old Testament, and Biblical Foundations for Human Rights and Social Justice, as well as being the um, editor of the recent EYN history, I mentioned. He and his wife, uh, Laraba, are the parents of two young adult daughters. Welcome, Dr. Nagata. It's like a dream. For the secretary and all the consulted efforts that made me to be here. I'm really delighted to be here. Um, I'm Philip, that's my first name, and my last name, of course, uh, And if you are calling my name, you don't know how to call the last name. Then my root is forgotten. That's my root, actually. And so I want to appreciate the director of the Norwood Center and that of Bethany Theological Seminary for the collaboration coming together so as to make my dream extensive. I really thank God for that. And you know, I'm still suffering from jet lag. You know, sleeping quite a If I sleep around 6, I wake up around 11. Then I walk through to 2 a.m. and then sleep again. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been the routine for the moment. But I think gradually I'm getting. Over 
Uh, celebrating the 100 years of pregnant witness in the Jura is indeed something that we need to request, especially in the heart of this country. I know the church and the brethren, but we buy our said that it started in the mind of Alexander Mark in 1708. And with that spirit, of unabutting that chance to think that's what influenced Mark and the church that was that persecuted actually in Europe. So the church had to move to Pennsylvania where the governor of Pennsylvania welcomed those so because there are freedom of religion, there is also a large farm ground where it was found. Then in 1723, again, Church of the Brethren is born in American soil. 200 years later, the Church of the Brethren is born in Gargida. And uh, Gargida is my mother's town, and Marwa is my father's town. So these towns are known to me. Just a thing in not say that the Church of the Brethren in Nigeria is the largest congregation of the Church of the Brethren in the entire world. And um, you could see that in a degree, one of the local church camps has a party of more than 2,000 people as a city. People who are American, you don't have that kind of stress. <laughs> but I think it's one of the largest communication. And during the insurgency, or during the period of Boko Haram, the church was actually raised down. But the glory of God, if you see the picture of the church today, you wonder if where it's actually dropped from heaven or <laughs> very beautiful. And, and so the church, I would say, that uh, Dr. Scova called in that of uh, Albert B. Kalsa, who were the pioneer missionaries of the Church of the Brethren in Nigeria. Let me just take a reflection of their journey. Well, I think it is going to be very important. You could see that I have, with blue ink, you will see Calcum campaign for missionaries life. Now, before Carl and Dr. Helser joined that campaign, it was Cancun who was the general secretary of the United Nations in Africa, Sudan, United Missionary in the United States. And so we were going down America and Europe, campaigning for people to actually go to northeast of Africa, especially in Nigeria, northeastern Nigeria. The reason being that Islam has not actually engulfed that area. So it was a deliberate move for, uh, for Calcum to actually stack this age so that if the missionaries are recruited and sent to that region, Africa, Nigeria, I think Islam will not be able to involve that. And that's exactly what happened. And so, uh, Hersa and Stovakal indicated interest, and the mission board again, the trip to the Brethren, sent them on an investigating missionary journey. To go and investigate, and then if it clicks well, then the mission starts. And of course, the people, they were probably not people like the people they were in their twenties. And so they left America to England, and they left their wives also in England while they were approaching the future of Africa. That was the passage for October 1922. And they sailed from Liverpool to Port Scandi in Ghana, also in 1922, uh, and arrived in Nigeria in 19 December 1922. Now, this is just the preliminary uh, introduction stage of their movement. 
But there was also the internal movement that had to do with the information to the government of the government of the day to be able to move forward. And so in 1922, when they arrived in Lagos, they reported themselves to the general sort of all people with a copy of commissions of uh, with the commission with a copy of commission's report. In that commission report, there was this high demand for teacher training. The end of view there is not Western part of Nigeria, and then, and then the northeastern part of Nigeria is established. And so people, because he was the, the, the government over the general in Lagos, he had an interest of the education and facilitated their movement to the interior part of the country. And this occasion is actually coming from what uh, the quotation is actually coming from, from the, uh, the writer of uh, No Longer a Peace. In northeastern Nigeria, there is demand for teaching training center that shall be found a strong hope for dissemination of Christian ideas when modernity is pending due to the fact that government is now building a scarce training to teach. So there was that northwest sector. Then the northeast also was a move for it also to have a trail so that it could be balanced. And so with that, when this commission report was given to Clayford, Clayford knew that this is the domain of good uh, intention. So there was this interior movement again after they were doing that commission. They left Lagos, they went to Juna and Zaria. In Zaria, they were able to pick up Shirku and Garba. One was their cook, the other one used to wash their clothes as longer. And then John seems to be one of their interpreters. The least interpreter came from Calabar. So I was thinking, maybe it should the brethren to start thinking of sending the people also to Canada to recruit others because of John. And so they had also challenges on their way. You know, in those days, they had horses, the rail, the trucking bicycle, pony bus, frog, and the rest. So the means of transportation in those days. And then some of them are actually trapped. And so when they arrived in Bill, because Bill is where the Bura people are domiciled. And so the intention of the mission is actually to look for the Bura people. And so when they arrived in Bill, they knew that that was where and that was the location of the people were looking for. But then, Bureau is such more people, right? And there are other Bura people around you know, about 200,000 pagans of my ancestors. Yeah. And so um, that's, that's, that's to say that the interest is there for what the government now permits them to begin mission work. So that was one of the challenges they were. There was first natural challenges. The roads were rocky, the bikes. You find those mosquitoes, find insect supply, you find wild animals while they were on their journey. So, so common person met with Major Edgar. Major Edgar is, um, is a retired major in British Army, and he's an anti-crime, I mean, anti Christian ideas. Mm -hmm. And so the reason is because in the northeastern part of Nigeria is ruled by is ruled through the local chiefs in a kind of indirect rule. And so if the missionaries have to settle in view, that means that some of the indirect group might not be direct any longer. And so for that reason, Major Edgar rejected the 
uh, the missionary. What I mean, the missionary is a call and the rest not to settle. But actually, they now object and ask for a place to stay. And you could see that that place is called Yimur Plaza. It's in my language. What that means is uh, Yimi is actually water, in my language. Plaza is actually, you know, the red leaves, the Fulanese, and it's like water for the Fulanese for their cup or their cows. So the object for that area, which is not actually far away, from the poor people. But then they were also what? rejected. So the missionaries actually called, uh, decided to settle a little bit, but then they were offered another place, which is called Gar Kedak. Now, what that means, Gar is actually a mountain in Pura language. Then Kedak is actually a kind of bamboo trees. Uh -huh. So the, it's a way of really getting them and say, oh, go and settle there. Not knowing they are still within their catchment area. <laughs> you see, the way God does the thing is wonderful. Yeah. So this conspiracy, when Edgar saw that the missionaries were making advancement in 1924 after the missionaries have settled down, Major Edgar forged a memo in the name of people <laughs> that the missionary is not allowed to stay in this car in this country. And so when Carl and Helsa came up, because they had fruitful discussion with people because of their interest in mission and education, then how tall, how comes again that little Edgar can say that Clifford Tom there was hostile? So at that point, when I was reading the documents, um, Hansa and Cole decided to turn firm and commit themselves to track until this matter is solved. So along the history line, these uh, uh, Hansa and Cole, but precisely Hansa, went back to Lagos with that memo, whether Clifford is aware of his memo that he has sent. Unfortunately, when Clifford discovered that it was a forged document, yeah. but he called Edgar and they settled that in their own way. That's <laughs> how the missionaries now were led to continue from where they could go. See, there are a lot of restrictions, but then they were receiving and they were Here yeah. comes again the part of the truth of the brethren of the church. It takes back to the March in 1923. You could see by the side, you know, where is that? Uh, yeah. Let me show you this tree. All that have been to Nigeria in Gertina, you know that this is the tree is still living. When the missionary actually came, they stepped up on the tree. And uh, uh, they prayed on the mystery, there was culture. Of the verses they read in the Christian chapter 2 from verse 14 to 16, which part of the school, or down to 29, where you have no more, no longer strangers. So that this tree is still standing as a witness to that direction. And so these are the, these are the three that they read in Christian 2, 14 to 22, uh, read by Hesse. And it's called, uh, the school work of the liberal family in the second grade to five grade. So they learn the people's language, which is the Bura, when they identify themselves with the Bura and taught the word of God in the Bura. They taught the people again how to read and write. They wrote stories in Bura language, ocean descriptions and all the hymns. I would have come with the hymns, but I, it's down on me for different races. And so uh, they did also some translation work so as to make their missions more effective for many people. As the church expands towards the eastern part, also they did some translation of one of the major tribes in the mountains, which is uh, Margie. Margie is also uh, 
big population of Jewish people. And so in December 1923, Carl preaches first son in Burma. First of all, he learned the language of the people and then spoke the language of the people and witnessed the vast language. One of the cardinal uh, strategies in mission is that just the all these coverage crews, they have also the medical, which is the rural health care delivery. They also have a public medical service or a medical system of where Dr. Bob in this book, but it's book, isn't it? In 1954, when that place was called, it's part of the rural development which has to do with agriculture, construction of roads. Remember when it was written one of the documents by Maury Group. Maury Group, the late Maury Group, was the first person who initiated the issue of what happened in 1959 in South Africa. So he began that. So the ideology behind the war. I like to see the case of Jed, I know Jed, I've yes. seen that case when I was at the AIDS case study in the top, 1992 to 1995 when I was doing it. And we were very active then. But when we saw Jed, we came down. HS time. <laughs> yeah. Well, the phrase is here, the <laughs> Jeds. Yeah, that's, that's uh, wonderful. And then the Shamanskar also engagement of the digging projects of portable water in the north of the So eventually it became a preaching and teaching. So the four or five poles structures of the brethren is actually encapsulated or enshrined in the place. However, Remember the church was actually growing at a very tender age, and there comes again another movement, which is Nigeria's independence. That was that movement. So how is the church grappling with, here yeah, comes the independence for the nation, freedom from the colonial masses, and here yeah, again, the church power the two for end in hand. And we know that uh, as part of the history of my nation, Senate in 1953, she and Tony Navarro was the first person uh, to make a move for Nigeria to be to have our uh, independence from British. Then in 1956, Queen Elizabeth also visited Nigeria and precisely she visited Joss, according to the story in history. And so that was the beginning. And so on 1st of October, Nigeria became an independent nation, where the following names you can see uh Sarahunka to all the new one of the man being simply in the world and then the modern mm-hmm. federal of these modern actually many of them actually were the forefront of Nigeria becoming an independent nation. Then here comes again another independent of the indigenous so, it's in the Brooklyn post that after 40 years of serving, you have to hand over the indigenous. And that's exactly what happened. Now came 1923, and by the time he was uh, 40 years, that was in 1963, he had to retire by the way. But the uh, yeah. So the call returned back to uh, where he came from. And this is actually a request, not a request, but is the policy that he has to come back home for other people. And the essence is to make sure that the indigenous now receive the leadership of the church. And so during that period, there was also the issue of indigenization. How do we have to how do we hand over this church to the indigenous people? So there ought to be a kind of training. Well, then, so the training is also very, very important. 
So the name of the church, which is the indigenous church, used to be Ladin Gawas. That's the way they used to call it. Ladin Gawas, you can't find that word in dictionary. It's actually a, a, a formulation to say Ladi uh, in house language means a location. The Gabas is actually east of that location. So the tribes of Bura, Margin, Chibo, Iki are in that strategic location. That was why it is called Nardi Gabas. So the name of that church in the Indian Empire and the Jura in 1972 and the was an adopted constitution at that time. Now, Reverend Charles Bible, he was actually the mission secretary, which was very, who handed over to the Yamara Jew, who was a part time general secretary. And uh, Reverend Wasinda, the initiator, also took over from the Yamara Jew as the first sort of candidate full time general secretary of the And of course, uh, Reverend Mumbadu Kenny Sheldon, who passed on a few months ago, uh, served as the part time chairman for the American Gawas. In the name, then you find New York City. Reverend Mike Spillet was also one time the chairman. So, Ewan became an indigenous church in 1972, which also coincided or coincided with vision policy. At that time, the government of the day were saying now, uh, okay, let missionaries return all the schools back to the government. But you see, the policy was also there. But there was only a political reason why the Nigerian government would also stay that let the schools become part of for for uh, management. I don't know whether that management is true or false, but I, I believe that it is not actually for management. It's just the guess that goes from the hands of the missionaries. That's why if you were studying the very detailed temple in the North East, that Walker School. By right. government secondary school worker and then government teacher college is now in the hands of the government. But then it was church of the brethren uh taught. It was also during one of the church lead uh the when the school were actually determined to be However, there's what they call community agreement. Why Iwain was actually getting that location only Iwain because there was that committee agreement between, um, between mission workers that if Iwain occupies this area, there shouldn't be an original management in coming to staff. So places were out of the different mission bodies, like the new one, take that place of Numan. And then you find in the Methodist, which is in Araba, find also in you know, the Baptist, also in Araba. So that committee was acclimated to what the next year. So the groups and development of the church under the missionaries. And you can see the pioneer missionaries there. You can see Carl, you can see Ruth, you can see uh, Elsa, and you can also see Laura, all of the blessed. I still remember the outcome that I read when Root came from 1924. He really gave birth to the baby boy. And that child died while she was on her deathbed. He made a confession and said, Lord, save Bura. Is documented in one of the sources I mean. I'm part of that salvation. I'm part of that, and many others also are part of that. So the church actually moved from the west, very part of Gertina, Baramal, Gertina, Wanderling, and Shaka. These are on the Bura side. 
Now, the gun that we want is mission stage. It's a mission stage thing that was accomplished by the court and Floyd. Well, what happened there was because there was maybe the safety fly and mosquitoes had to change the missionary away from them, so the station was back in the close. So that was the reason why I got them now in the next range. But when you come to the east side, you can see the last time, the Sanchevo, the Black, the Uba, and then one of the best missions sent to the box. There's a couple of ways. Uh, on the western side, you can see the mission station where it's covering in the Kira. Under the altitude of what? The Albert and the Albert. And then the person that came to this company for a while in 1913 was the Eggmans. Then Garden now, you see, I said, the Cloy, the Wonderland, the Albert, the Bogan, and the And so this was the early missionaries that's. When you come to the Eastern Technology again, call things that initially to the end, the only east where the world people were. I'm sorry, where the Maldi people are, and it's how we can meet the end of the country. Then you can have a character, the marriage, you also have the Romans, you also have the Grimlings, you also have the Mitchell, and then you have Rather than the strong. This is actually from first nation. So how can we church the prayer? When there was order at Joshua, the first nation was actually the Cameroon. But when there was not order at Joshua, then it fell in the Nigerian side. So they asked to there as the church the prayer in order to continue with the mission war. The legacy of the missionary is that what they left behind. Where well, they hand it over to the indigenous people, a strong and indivisible church, a united, both west and east, were working together in family, despite their ethnic differences of the Chinese. They also left a peaceful heritage church to the indigenous. At the same time, remember. One of the general secretary handed over the crucial car <laughs> and the truck. The truck tow is actually more for adventures. So I think it's a very good place to look at that, what is happening at that time. The leadership became in the hands of the indigenous people. Remember, we said to custom back to the Bible, we saw how the missionaries actually moved to the gospel. Now when they hand it over to the indigenous people, the indigenous people now pick up from the expedition. And so what is happening there, there was this training, right? To train the indigenous to be able to work, to be able to satisfy the desire. That means that the first training school of the Church of the Virgin was in 1915 in the Chubal. And Reverend um Mario Shania uh, from my hometown and uh, Reverend Karbam from Nasa. These were the first two people that were trained as first indigenous people in 1955. Mm -hmm. The natural orders actually key to that. So, subsequently, so there were training institutions that came up. Uh, the Bible school, uh, uh, Moody, Freddy, Fine Orders in Marama, Lassa, and then all of these that boost the leadership prospect. So that those that came in would actually satisfy the growing church. That is, this history that is very important in E1. These periods, 1923 to 1973, was purely in the hands of the mission. Then the indigenous again picked it up from 1973 to 2023, and still in the hands of the indigenous. So there was that spread in how the church was moving. And then the church also, uh, in our own way, um, designed an open movement um, so as to find the leadership structure of how it groups, the leadership of the I know the church of the brethren was not that. 
that is actually in our, the African context in order for the church also to power China's of communication. In Spain, what happened was the strategy that was adopted by the missionaries is what the ever growing indigenous church also takes up that is evangelism and the church plans. And so the group of the church from CP Sound in Newbury, and then to Nova, you could see all the names of those uh, places that the church of the Brethren are planted and grow. Then you have our mission groups, too, church groups, in choir and CME, as a women fellowship, or as we gave to the rest of the CME in the world. And then finally, you could also see what the church programs were actually created in. For instance, the integrated community based on the women program, that has to do with the local community, with the local section, that takes care of the rural health section, agriculture, detailing and aids, instead of women ministry, and the rest. The church community, that's tragically to be However, there are also, uh, mission, uh, foreign missions. You can see that the first day with this article was actually took. It was Reverend Juan Van Schoot and, uh, Betty in 1982, 83, in Angola, uh, and so he was the first person who was initiated to the party for the church of the Brethren to go to the shores of the West Africa. Then you could see also in Niger, Cameroon, Rwanda, these are new functions. The beginning and intensity of Boko Haram. Boko Haram was actually a major challenge, a major blow to the church of the world. But I would we not actually understand Boko Haram, which you get to the future of the religion crisis in Northern, precisely in Northern Niger. It's not from poverty, misunderstanding. Then you come to the Hebrew Massacre, which has to do with the African civilization. But deeply, what happened was the air relationship between Christians and Muslims. And so the evil spells that they were marginalized by those people. And so they wanted to react. And then there was that collusion that led to the civil war, which many of them were actually killed. And so the majority of Jesus struggled the community, how she was able to manage her. Uh, but then you get the religious uh, attention from there, the most complex, the community, the free, all of these things. There are also politics that is also involved, which religion dominates. See, the religion is very, very sensitive in Africa, especially in Nigeria. It's either you are politicizing religion or you are religionizing politics. Mm. So, these are the two. Actually, more in the way that is very sensitive. However, the three major religions we have, we know, in Nigeria, the Christianity, and the Islam, and the African religion. African religion and religion is not uh, a big deal. But the two major religions are always in tension are Christianity and Islam. And in Islam, we have a lot of facts. Of uh, Islam, of Muslim brotherhood, of Shias, and the rest. However, the Book Haram formation, whose actually started with Muhammad Pursuit, was to establish a kind of faith of Islam. That's actually the major drive. Right? Uh -huh. <coughs> Book in Hausa means education. Haram is actually forbidden. Right? So, Western education forbidden. Okay. They don't want Western education. It's purely what they want is Islamic culture. So that is what the theology is like. And the activities, they use suicide bombers. They also use uh, kidnappings and the rest. These are the major activities of Boko Haram. And especially, they deal, first of all, with the security agents. Not that they don't with security agents, every other person falls prey to mm -hmm. And that also you can see in the documentary, actually, 
So the impact of the Boko Haram soldiers led the church of the Brethren from its historic roots to refugees and jobs in 2015. I was there teaching at uh, Cole through the seminary. On one Sunday afternoon, we were told that the Boko Haram out of their way to come. Guess what will happen? Over these days, of course, we have to work. That's the wrong part, guys. Yeah, because we're told they're coming. So we don't want to test God and say that God has the power to stop this in the moment. Like, he has given us our legs to be here on the side. It guys to be moved and be And temporary, and they occupy those areas. So two years later, Right, when Reverend Joy S. Dealey came as the president of the church, now decided and said that the church return back to its historic origin. And that was wow. Also, there were a lot of reactions towards that. When the book on our state, what are we going to do? When I see the thing that if the church of the president left that region, there would have been total darkness in that region. But going to that section again is actually light. It was in the light of the gospel. So you could see also the impact of that destruction. From 2015 to 2022, you see about 700,000 people in this place. <laughs> Out of about 60 DTP, district church council, all the infantry. You saw it, if you were destroyed, many only seven were functioning. Then out of the two girls, you could see it in two words in the team, were UN and this. And you could see the devastation of the fact that were, were either directly or what or casually. So EY is like EY in no. Then, right from the Everyone takes its shoes to the city, and where the church was actually started from was there. And so you could actually see again that until the total people were to eight point eight thousand four hundred and nine people were to, including the eight pastors put together. These are people who were killed even in. And I think this is the most of us can see blow from the So the effects we can see also has the affected our income. How would she sustain the leadership of the church? Now the church is actually destroyed. But then there was no specific church in the game of that system. The leadership of the church, like the degree. Uh, Buja, Rivers, and the Chalco, we were actually the sentences, Stephen's, for the church to survive. And there was that physical, moral, social, economic, and also psychological effects that came from the ministry of the church. And in starting to mention, okay, it's Reverend Yasko Chalo, and then Reverend Noam Kendi, those who are the Few martyrs that were killed as a result of their thing. And one of my students, young Tom, was also killed, uh, as a member of that section. So you can see how it shows what What came up again is really surprising. God's faithfulness in the use of the soldiers. In the old health, you could see donations from the Church of the Brethren in America, the Mennonites, Central City, Charity, Mission 21, Bread for Life, Christian Living Ministry, and all the local donors. Now, assisted the EYN while she was temporarily in jobs. With a lot of relief for you. And this relief material is one of the restricted to the Muslims. Both Christians and Muslims. Benefit from that religion. And I think this is the side of Christ. Yeah. Love your enemies. That was what the church demonstrated at that 
few. Not saying that, oh, it's only meant for you and members. It's only meant for the president of the church, or even the those of our Islam and our Muslims in and then also our Hebrew Muslim city. A lot of uh, things happen in And so the church again in our wisdom, learning from the church of prayer, is to build uh, villages in Taraba and Nasrallah city. This is actually to relieve those that have lost their homes, to accommodate them. It belongs to the church where you can stay there as long as you can. Why? Aha. So that was what the church did. But it's not under the ownership of any single person, but it belongs to the church. So we could stay out there. And then something came up with me, this coming to the Great Grand Microfinance Bank. So as to help the church have a central payment that could go around the members of the church. And you see there's another record again to think of. And it's tied to Crago for it. You remember Crago? Yeah, his name after him. And then called such a water of service in Mexico. So there was small scale businesses that came out for the church there to go out to this end. And then during that period, the president actually made a tour of E1. So as to encourage people to go to the victimized, to strengthen, to encourage them that they see the story of the church or things like that. Just like Tertullian would say, that the blood of the martyrs is the speed of the church. So the church was persecuted, but then it was happening quickly in that direction. It may surprise you to see that there was a GP very close to San Diego for it in Chile. And then in 1921, there was 224 organized local churches for in an intact region alone. And this is where the persecution was so hard and intense. And so that's the story of Iran. It's like Iran was taken to exile, just like Judah. Take into exile. The later on again, Judah returned back to this story group. So he wanted also to return back to our story group. And if you get to the Ephesus, you will see as if nothing has ever happened. <laughs> yes! Because you see the magnificent beauty that is there all the the king of the church, the Watson, strong, and strong. And I believe that that's a broken call that the church inherited from 1923 from the hands of the base witnesses is still standing up to one, though they are challenging him and there. The peace of what is the call, he wants to be the church. And so, how is the, how did he want to survive with this peace project as a historic peace church? It does not have to be changed by George. What he inherited from the brethren is to continue to want to leave out that section. And so you could see that because it is God's word, the point of the footprint of Christ, for the New Testament cutting of the eye, the brethren constantly keep the peace making, peace building, peace sustaining, peace church, the non violent, that is why the church of the brethren is non material. Today. So I think again that is a gift to the church in Nigeria. Once the church was left to exile, it returns back. The church that was known for peace continued to strive towards insurgents in difficult prison. And yet the church continued to enable is based on the word of Christ that I will use my church to the gates of perishment and there against. And that's the story of E Y N. So the strategy used by E Y N is actually to create an obsession within the peace sector, which is known as Campini. Christian unity, peace unity. 
So they targeted the young people for Muslims, the clerics, for both Christians and Muslims, uh, take it together, talk about issues of insecurity, talk about issues of peace, talk about issues of tolerance, how do we live with one another in the community? And I think the target is getting closer and closer and then stop. My conclusion is that brethren who witness the most the modest part of all this region in Nigeria, particularly the Nagri Belt, has brought tremendous transformation to the lives of the people of this country. It brought salvation to our city. It brought health. It taught us how to live and uh, found wealth. It gave us education. It improved our community. Uh, development. Now, also, I can say again, the people in the town had seen a great night. You want anyone to always live with the legacy of Christ and of the Church of the Brethren, which is rooted in this place through the influence of our party and what we get. More devotions, more to the Once it's feed, now a big tree where birds nest and take their shoes. You want to church with the light in the northeast as a living witness of Christ doing God's work, God's work. Thank you for listening. That is an amazing presentation. I appreciate it very much. I'll be fair. Uh, some of the early things, uh, were things I have not heard of before, and so it's fascinating. I'm uh, interested in the book. I did have a question. Um, you know, there's sort of three different epochs. So there's the 1923 to uh, um, 19, uh, 1923 to 1973, and and we we heard you say that indigenization, the church began to be led by Nigerian people around that time. So that makes the demarcation, right? But then 1973 to 1998, what, what is that demarcation? What made that switch to, to end an epoch and begin a new one from 1998 to 2023? Right. Did you, I don't know if that's a long question to repeat. But. Um, what? Can I answer this question? Can I go ahead and answer it? Yeah. No. So in 1903, from 19 1973, which is 50 years. There's a book that was actually um, 50 years in Nadine Gallows. There was a book actually written that called that thing. So, um, but from 1973, right, which is when the church was actually transferred to the indigenous people, right, and it's funding. Uh, I mean, the leadership now is in the hands of the churches, but no more in the hands of the missionaries. Although the missionaries were having to supervise, possibly from here, looking at how, because the partnership actually continued. So there was still a finally, and at the same time, learning from each other to be able to stand very strongly. So from 1973 to 1993, that's when we want to celebrate the 70 years of the bridge. And it was known in the You see, the issue is this. In 1950 years, was actually the bridge in the Gila. Right? Then the 75 years again was also celebrated in the So you could think, you could also see that people who want that to be repeated again. No. Yeah. So I think it's just celebrating the 75 
Okay, I had a guess. I was guessing that that might have been when the decision was made to no longer maintain the comity of staying only in one area and move elsewhere. I don't know what year that took place. And Bodhi used to tell me about that, that the students went to the universities and then started churches there, but it was a move away from having the whole UIN in one area. I don't know when that took place. You know, uh, the, the, the point is this. At the end of speech when the missionaries agreed on the committee agreement, the church of the burden, this is no location. Right. Lutheran did the old condition. Baptist did the old condition. That is a task. So you see, uh, there's a piety in the children's society. Why? There's a dynamic thing in the society of the people who decide to leave this region, they move to all the region. Okay. So at that time, the church cannot be so strong to stop all the neighbors from reconvening themselves. So, that's why in one of the slides that I said, uh, where is it that's like, anyway, um, it's the fact that you, for instance, where I am living now in the jobs, where the UIN church is, right, in Buhu, very close by, about 50 meters away from where we are. Then just five meters away again, you find Kofi. Then another five meters again, you find the CRC, Christian Reformed Church of Christ. So you see, so that's where it was normal standing in the long So the, the church is moving where the church is moved. And that's exactly what happened to the establishment of churches in city. What happened in the degree that was in 1979? I think it was What happened was people were actually saying, oh, we need a church to be So those who found a worker had a choice of the church of the And so when they gained employment in the same capital, they just started out in church too. And that's how it started. So very well, the membership of UIB. We move with evangelism and the church. My So 1979 was my Google list. Yes. And that was sort of the beginning yes. of that. Uh, and then, I could have read it in such a way you could see the Mediterranean in Mula, the Mula, Jaws, the Mula, let's say you were sending it to Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ecclesia Yanawa in Nigeria is also. Yes. Now, if the church is beyond the uh, region of the house of people, is that name still valid? Uh, in other words, is it uh, a deterrent to uh, spreading the gospel? Or should there be another name for the church that is not the house of people? Now, um, you could see that, um, in this, you could see here, in this is the top of mm -hmm. so there goes, mm -hmm. right? There are people in the top courts that are like house of people. <coughs> and yes, they embrace the church of the bread. Now, the name, that's why the, the, the English version of the church of the bread in Nigeria, then slash you want all you want in slash church of the brethren because the church actually registered with corporate appeals as e y n so it moves to that traditional name this was the fact that it's not only on the house of god but there are other places where it was it is just to maintain our identity it has nothing to do with with the mental foundation, yes. But it's more still spoken. Of course, that from them. Nobody. Oh. It's only still a living language. 
this is a former vice president of EY, uh, Reverend Rama Kenna. Yeah, he is working uh, very seriously at the local level. So as the younger ones you want to get them in the job. Mm -hmm. I'm still not the <laughs> what are the numbers of the um, circuit runner compared with other denominations? And also, are there any inter denominational um, connections? Yeah. In the Nordics, especially in that location that I talked about, for instance, in Yola, the Jubilee, then you have view, then you have Shibok. In that location, in two states, Monroe and the Ukraine, where precisely the location of the Church of the Brethren. So E1 is the dominant church. But there are also other denominations, but the percentage of E1 is much more than that. When you come to Jaws, you find Koki, Church of Christ in Nations. Right? It used to be Church of Christ in Nigeria, but they have transformed their name to Church of Christ in Nations. So they are more dominant in jobs in the country. So you see, so wherever the missionary back in the center where the identity of that church is found, they publish much more than other denominations that are in part there too. But there is also a fellowship between these churches and all the Thank you for your time. Thank you again for listening. Thank you uh, again, uh, Dr. Lingata. Uh, thank you for sharing with us this evening. As we um, wrap up this evening, I will mention again the recently published PYNS Centennial book um, that is on the table in the lobby. You can take a uh, look at that. And again, if you are interested possibly in purchasing a copy, you get your name and contact information there, and we'll look into uh, the cost for having the book, um, uh, <laughs> copies of the book should here. Um, please come back uh, next spring to Young Center events, uh, our, our spring newsletter, and uh, check back next month to our webpage as we post our events for next semester. But I will just mention March 14 and 15 will be our uh, Dirt Ball Lecture and Seminar celebrating 80 years of Pepper Project. Uh, so that uh, is coming up next uh, March, among other um, activities and events that we have on the schedule. Special thanks this evening to our support staff from Information Technology Services to help to make this recording possible. And thanks to those who have done knowledge for the young Center. Safe travels as you appreciate it.